hi everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel it's been a while how is everything for those that are new here my name is benita and i'm a youtuber based here in Lagos state nigeria i'm going to be doing a series on my youtube channel where i talk about mysterious events and things that have happened in nigeria in africa as a whole while i am doing my makeup today we are going to be talking about chief victor Namdi Okafo, popularly known as Ezego. You know when you go to the east and you are saying Chief Victor Namdi Okafo, people will be looking at you like, yeah, but if you say Ezego, Chief Ezego, everybody will start like, you know, people who are familiar with the name. The name is a very popular name in eastern Nigeria. So today we are going to be talking about his life and everything that happened to him, his wealth, how he died, and also just keep on watching. So, Chief Victor Namdi Okafo, popularly known as Ezego, which means the king of money, aka the young millionaire, was born on the 25th of December 1964 and he was from Iyala in Anambra State. If you are from the East, you know where Iyala is. So, he went to Uzoka Primary School in Iyala and also Abbott Boys High School. Also in Iyala, that was his secondary school, but later on he dropped out along the way. So when he dropped out, you know, things just became somehow. He later joined an armed robbery gang and was robbing him and his gang to rob NHL traders and, you know, collect their money and all. You know, he was just living one kind of life like that. So later on, he was arrested and the police caught him and his gang members. The person that his dad even had to disown him when he heard the news. Ezigo was the first son. When his gang members were being convicted and sentenced, he escaped. He fled. He allegedly escaped to Umumeni village. That's where he went to stay for some time. And after then, he went to his maternal home in Umuduru. From Umuduru, he went to Lagos, like such a greener pastures, to stay with a mentor, someone that promised to like take care of him when he get when he got to Lagos. Now, this is where the story begins. When you hear Ezegu, like when his name comes up, what people always think of is blood money ritual 419 yahoo and the likes when he got to lagos things were not all that rosy nobody heard of him all of a sudden is it good just blew up so it was just too sudden nobody i think till today people are still speculating his wealth okay nobody knows the exact way he started some people actually think that he went to Okija shrine and did blood money rituals while some other people think that he started duping people like this yahoo this nowadays yahoo he started doing yahoo and from there he blew up had money and invested his money into different businesses but sha 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 all people knew was that he just you know? Guys, just in case you are hearing some kind of noise, some children are outside. I can't stop them from playing. I don't know who they are, so please just stay with me and continue the story. The story. So Ezego had so many businesses, companies that were all in his name. He built the Ezego shopping complex on Allen Avenue at the Kedja in Lagos State here, which also has a branch. They have a branch in Abuja. He built the Ezego shopping plaza on the Mutana Mohamed International Airport at that's the airport road in Abuja. His electronics store which was at the time one of Nigeria's largest stores was actually managed and operated from those um, complexes and supermarkets that he built. Some of his other businesses include Vic Winners International Limited, Ezego Nigeria Limited, Ezego Holdings Limited, Vitex Linko Limited, Ezego, Ezego Properties Limited, and so on. Like he had so many businesses like the man was so rich and he invested in in so many things people didn't even care about his businesses and all their mind was this man just did blood money did money ritual he sacrificed somebody somewhere why some other people were like okay 
he did 419 he did yahoo and then now he's investing so like there are two different people i actually want to know in the comment section which side you are on are you on the side that believes that he was into blood money or you are on this other side that believes that okay fine and good this man's hand was not clean but the, it, it had nothing to do with blood maybe he did his 419 did his yahoo and along the line the money he got from the scam he pulled he invested it in his businesses He's, i want to know in the comment section which side are you on this wealth was so mysterious that people couldn't even lay a hand on okay this is how this man got this money anyway he had so many mansions so many houses and so many villas scattered all over the country like everywhere one of his houses was allegedly made of bullet proof glass this is in the 90s in the 90s where like people were still trying to grasp modern like very very modern life and civilization this man was already using bulletproof glass to build his houses you can imagine like he was even way ahead money stops nonsense money <laughs> make money but not illegal in the 90s he had real estate worth over 500 million naira that's half a billion in the 90s his very big mansion in his hometown in Iala was worth over 500 million naira too then and all the things he used to build that mansion everything was imported from italy money day now so <laughs> hello he had homes villas mansions all over the world like, who wouldn't do that kind of money who would not then another thing about him was that he loved cars he was into cars luxurious cars cars that you wouldn't even think of buying that was the one that isn't was parking in his garage he had one of the biggest private garage in africa when he was alive the man was just constantly stalking his garages <laughs> both the one in lagos and the one at iala with new cars he was really really in. he was fascinated with luxury cars some people even put value of the cars in his garage at over one billion naira mind you this was in the 90s oh, Jesus. he once spent i think 40 million naira on two posh cars from moon trains a lincoln continental mark 8 sedan and a mercedes-benz r230 convertible like <laughs> when he died he left behind a fleet of very very luxurious cars in his garage 70 homes scattered across nigeria and abroad and over 10 billion naira in his account bank account this was in the 90s Chief Victor Namdi Okafo was married to a very beautiful fair princess. Her name was Loretta Kichi from Akata in Imo State. And they later had eight children. Though after Ezigo's death, she moved from their residence in Ajao to Leki. Okay, so I just did my eyes. I just finished my eyes. Anyway, by the way, his first song, Ezigo's first song was with a Japanese woman and apart from Ikechi's children, he had other children outside their marriage. Ezigo's life was very mysterious and very controversial. There are so many controversies surrounding his life and also his death too was mysterious and controversial. Like there are also so many controversies surrounding his death normally every december 25th he will go back home travel home for christmas and also december 25th was his birthday so normally what he does is he will go home for the celebration that's for like i think triple celebration for christmas his birthday and new year he was known for impressing people with his wealth that's like showing off you know like showing off his wealth and luxury he was a philanthropist he gave to the poor you know like everybody felt the impact of his wealth especially in his hometown in Iyala. like whenever he was around everybody knew that Ezeku was in town if he is a duama his kinsmen and the women would like 
be waiting every year because it it goes back every year for the annual carnival it was more like a carnival so every year everybody will be waiting kings men no kings women no village people everybody will be waiting that 25th that he will come back because they know the whole goodies the whole celebration party everything that they were going to like you know receive even popular nigerian musicians like then like big names were paid to come and perform at the party or carnival every year at Ihala. You know, that year everybody was in high spirits, everybody was prepared, like everybody was planning and planning, you know, of how that particular year was going to be. The money day. The money was there, so money was not a problem. It was just for everything to be done properly and you know, even as it go had to like for that year. That was um, 25th of December 1999. He went to Fela Shrine, the Almighty Fela Shrine. Mm -hmm. He even had to visit there to like talk to Femi Kuti and make sure that okay, this year or this how everything is going to be. Although some people are also saying that he went to Fel uh, Fela Shrine for some other reasons, but some people like this whole this whole is a good matter is in two parts the people that are on the side that he was diabolic and the people that are on the side that fine and good though he he went no straight but he he was illegal he did illegal one or two illegal maybe drug dealing or yahoo business but he made his money real even though it was illegal so people believe that okay he went to fella shrine for i don't know maybe this side or he went there just to like invite Femi Kuti to come and perform for that year. The carnival was scheduled to happen on the night of Christmas till 26th. That's Boxing Day. Ezego was just planning and planning, not knowing that he was actually planning his funeral. Like, this life is just very strange. So, on the 23rd of December 1999, set out for Iyala, Anambra State. He left in a convoy of six of his most luxurious cars, a Lincoln Navigator 1999 model, a Cherokee Jeep, a limousine from the 90s, a blue Porsche and a new Honda car. Those are the six cars that were in the convoy. Well, now, this is where the whole confusion is and the whole mystery and everything surrounding his death. Normally, this chief would fly from Lagos to Botakot or Enugu. His fleet of convoy will be waiting for him at the airport. So they are the ones that will now carry him to Ihala. That's, that was like his routine every single year. Like, you know when that's like somebody's routine, that's what you expect. But that particular year, plane crashes, that year was, it was too much. So. I think maybe that was what made him to change his mind. He was not like okay that they're going to drive down to Ihiala by road. Now another funny thing again is he was like he was going to drive himself. Now mind you, this man is a big man. And he has his personal driver. He has people that is driving, but he told them that in this particular journey, I'm going to be driving myself, and I'm going to be alone in this car. His guys are like okay, no wala. So. Obviously, they, they joined the other convoy. Guys, I don't know how this makeup is looking. I don't understand what I'm doing. The reasons Ezego said he was going to drive himself to today, nobody knows. Although some people are saying that um, he knew he was going to die, that blah, 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 blah. You know, some people were just saying so many things, but we don't know the actual reason he said he was going to drive himself. They allowed him and you know he decided to drive the Cherokee Jeep. He was in the Cherokee Jeep driving. You know, then all of a sudden while I started, the Jeep's engine started giving issues. You know, there was like no time. He was like, there's no time. You already had things planned out, he already had his schedule, you already knew how he wanted his day to be, so he was like he was going to manage. The jeep from wherever the thing got had still having issues down to Ihiala. So he was able to manage the jeep, you know, keep forcing it till they got to Asaba. When they got to Asaba, 
the jeep just broke down like the jeep <laughs> the jeep refused to move again at this point he was distressed he didn't know what to do he was confused then he thought about okay let me call a mechanic to come and service this car but servicing the car will require them leaving the car at that asaban road then he was like ah no that he was not going to leave his car along the road there you know the man loved cars like he did he was not about to leave his baby his luxurious baby on the road there because he didn't want people to like steal the car he pulled the car down to Ihiala. so now this is the part that i did not understand again this man fixed his cherokee that broke down to the back of the lexus to be told he now also decided to be the one to drive his car that has broken down i don't know if you guys get what i'm saying this man is the chief this man has all the money in the world he could have just, you know, like told his one of his boys, okay, you guys should tow this thing, please. I'm tired of all this rubbish, blah, 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 blah. But he decided to tow his own car by himself, okay, alone. What he did was the Lexus, that's the Lexus Jeep, he was the one that now, was now driving, he then told those boys there to go and sit down in the um, Cherokee car, that's to guide the car while he's towing it. As Oga boss, nobody could be like, uh uh, boss, what's. Like, we don't understand your plan at all. Nobody could argue with him. So, he just agreed. And guys, I'm done with makeup. So, let me just wear my hair and then we'll continue the story. So, let's finish our story. Later on, they got to a road between Ozubulu and Okija on that um, Onicha Express. That's Onicha Wiri Expressway. And they were just two, just two kilometers close to like here like that's his house when that's just remembered is it so while like going through a slope is it go reportedly ran into a damaged portion of the road and you know due to that shock he stepped on the bricks in his car now remember that he was actually towing his um Cherokee jeep so the person driving that car was caught on her ways you know Ezego was in front so when he stepped on the bricks all of a sudden the person driving the one at the back was caught on her ways and then he rammed into Ezego's Le um, Lexus car and that and his car skid off the road into a ditch now there are different accounts of how this accident happened some people say that okay while he stepped on the brakes one at the back hit his car and sent down flying into the deep ditch while some other reports allege that you know, there was a chain the towing chain that was like holding the Lexus in front and the Cherokee at the back so due to the whole accident and all the chain snapped and making that one at the back to ram into the one in front the shark skidded off the road and landed into a ditch immediately this whole thing happened the whole convoy was like thrown into a state of chaos everybody was confused there was pandemonium his men that were in the convoy everybody ran out you know to go and like bring him out of the ditch and save his life so they could take him to the hospital when they finally succeeded like by bringing him out of that ditch he already had a big deep cut in his face and some other part of his faces were already swollen and he was unconscious you know that is fine face because Isaac was a very very handsome man so his face was already like damaged they brought him out and he was rushed to a nearby hospital called Lady of Lords. Some years back, Ezego had donated to this hospital. He donated, I think, a sum of 15 million allegedly. So that was like the hospital that was close by at that time. So they rushed him to the hospital. While he was being rushed to the hospital, he was stable but unconscious. So when they got to the hospital, everybody, all the workers, staff, everybody started like, you know trying to do one or two just to like revive him because they already knew who he was he was a philanthropist he like took care of people he donated money to people like they knew is a good so they were doing everything possible to revive this man now fortunately there was no doctor on seat in general hospitals 
by the time a doctor like arrived by the time a doctor came i think it was almost late because he was bleeding through his mouth he had internal bleeding and his body was already in a state of shock so all the attempts to like revive and stabilize him failed so at this point his family suggested that okay fine let's move him to a better equipped hospital in Portacot. While he was being moved, this is the part that I'm not really sure of, like I don't know because nobody knows. Um, we don't know if, because this is the part where he like gave up the ghosts, we don't know if he gave up while on the way to Portacot or while flying from Portacot to Lagos, but Sha while he was on the way to the hospital, the other hospital that was recommended give up the ghost. So Mr. Victor Namdi Okafo, popular known as Ezebo, died on the 26th of December 1999 and he died in an unconscious state. Well, people people still remember him. People are yet to forget him. I mean, like that's why I'm watching this video. The old people that you know because this thing happened it's not really far it's 1999 people that were aware and around that period still remember him some people that were that were born after then some don't remember some research some hear about his name and research him after his death his businesses collapsed i don't know why like i don't know why every of his business collapsed his mansion, that his mansion in, in at Ihala is now like a complete shadow of itself. All the trees and the flowers in his house, they've been overgrown by weeds. And the road leading to his house, all the roads leading to his house, they've been washed away by erosion. Even some parts of that, his glass house, they've all fallen off. So, and they are decaying, you know, like the house is screaming. To be renovated but nothing now because of the mystery surrounding his life that's about the whole okija blood ritual and blood money everything surrounding his life and his death because of the mystery of his death everything is in his house is still there like normal ninja nigeria that people would have goggled the house and stolen some of the things there or some people would have taken over and all the house is still the way it is. It's just that some of the things they are spoiling and scratching. People just, you know, go in there to sightsee and, you know, come out like nothing without even touching a pin because they are scared, you know, the whole rumor of his wealth being gotten from blood, like blood ritual and blood money and all. So everybody is just, people that visit there just abandoned. Nobody touches anything. After his death, Normally, as a big man, your will is supposed to be read. But after Ezego's death, the lawyer, Mr. Barnabas Igwe, who was supposed to like be in charge of the reading of his will and the execution of everything, the will was murdered alongside his wife on the 2nd of September 2002, barely three years after Ezego's death. So, like January of 2006, his will has not been read and the people that are supposed to inherit it, that's his beneficiaries, nobody knows anything about it. His properties are just abandoned, businesses abandoned, all his wealth, all his money abandoned. So there was a time the police was, you know, contacted to investigate all these complicated controversies, you know, surrounding everything that has been happening. But their investigations have not led to anything you know so that's everything about easy you know and his life his money his properties everything his children are still alive flourishing and okay that's so please tell me what you feel about this whole thing in the comment section are you on the side that he was doing he was involved in you know blood money ritual in you know, a shrine or are you on the side that he was a legit person but made his money like legitly or are you also on the side that he did you know yahoo 419 and invested his money and got like more money because this man the 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 properties that this man had 
didn't even correlate with his businesses like it was excess it was excess well, anyway tell me what you think in the comment section also tell me what you think about this today's episode if you enjoyed the story should i do more should i do my makeup while telling the story or i should just tell the story like that please give me feedback of if you enjoyed this video so that i'll know whether i, I will do another one if there if there's any other person you want me to talk about you can also leave it in the comment section please subscribe to my channel and supports me i really want to like move far in this youtube journey thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye